Turn with me this morning to the book of Luke 24. Gospel according to Luke chapter 24. And uh, one of my things that I wanted so much was uh, I needed more lighting. Uh, not so much in my face, but down on the Bible. So I said, I'm going to put this one in just for me so I can see a lot better. Amen. Because I'm not ready to get those glasses yet. My, I, I'm a little prideful right now. You know, I'm not ready. Try to see one, but I'm not ready. So I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll get better light. <laughs> Amen. But the, the book of Luke, chapter 24, what a great time we had last week. Uh, we're there at the Hilton. And in attendance, we had over 600 people there at the Hilton for our 2014 Easter celebration. And can, can I mean, was I the only one, but did, the, did, did not our youth department do an awesome job? Wow. Wow. I mean, to hear those little babies sing and to see the teenagers take a drama with nothing, with no props, and, and give such a powerful illustration of the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Wow. That put goose pimples on my goose pimples. I mean, that, 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 that ought to make a mummy shout when you saw that. Amen. Amen. But I was just so blessed to be part of that and that experience. Blessed to be here this morning as we move forward after the resurrection. Move forward after the resurrection. Luke 24. Let's start at verse 36. Luke 24, verse 36. The Bible says, And as they thus spake, speaking of the disciples, this is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, they were all gathered in a little room, that Jesus Himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and they were afraid, and they supposed that they had seen a ghost. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled, and why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, this is I myself. Handle me and see, for a ghost has no flesh and bones, uh, as you see that I have. And when, they had, uh, when, he, when Jesus had thus spoken, he showed him, uh, himself, and he showed his hands and he showed his feet. And while yet they believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have you here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it, and he did eat before them. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was with you, that all these things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand Scripture. Verse 46 says, He said unto them, Thus it was written, thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in His name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem, and you are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise. Somebody say, Behold, I send the promise. Of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and he blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, that we are continually in this temple raising our hands and blessing you, Lord. We thank you, God, for this word. And now we pray, God, that you prepare our hearts to receive, amen, and our ears to hear what you have to say to this body this day in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone says, Amen. amen. As we are now closing the resurrection, amen, today is going to be a, a two-part series where we're going to close the resurrection and we're going to move forward into Pentecost. And so the next several weeks, I'm going to be speaking of the Holy Ghost, of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, of, of the empowerment of the Holy Ghost. And today, as we close this resurrection, we are simply moving forward after the resurrection. 
Now at this time, as we just read, these men, these disciples, had been on quite an emotional roller coaster. Now some of us, we've been on that roller coaster before, haven't we? Uh, this week for me was a roller coaster. Now I'm a very sentimental guy. My wife and the people around you will tell you there were several things that I did not want to let go in this building. Uh, uh, the, 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 even the, the banners, they were very precious to me. Uh, they were very precious to me. And, and after I got to praying about them, the, the, the Lord just kind of checked my spirit because uh, we are helping another young church uh, to, to establish and, and we have been helping them uh, financially and sending them uh, uh, blessings. And, and when I was talking to the pastor, he said, you know, we have no money to buy things for our walls and, and all of these different things. And, and, and the Holy Spirit checked me right then and there. And as we were looking into doing this remodel, I told him, I said, Pastor, I said, I have something for you that is very sentimental, very precious to me, and it's going to bless you. And so he, uh, the, those, uh, those banners that you had seen that some of our ladies had made are now hanging in a small church that is that is that is, that is uh, replanted and, and, and going forward in the name of the Lord. Amen. So 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 some things were very sentimental to me. So this this week was a, an emotional roller coaster. So I can testify of that emotional roller coaster. But when I think about the disciples, I think about how that they had witnessed Jesus. They had witnessed Jesus to, to, to heal the blind and heal the lame, to perform miracle after miracle. They were with him in the garden as he prayed with such a, a, a fervency and a heaviness. They saw the soldiers begin to take him away. They watched in a distance. In a distance, as the same crowd that they were part of, friends no doubt, and family members no doubt, they watched in the distance as those people turned their back on Jesus and they chose a common criminal over Him and they began to shout upon Jesus, crucify Him, crucify Him. They were there when he was beaten, when he was eventually placed upon a cross to die a disgraceful death. No doubt they were dealing with mixed emotions. Can you imagine the roller coaster they were on? I mean, I mean, here was Jesus, their Messiah, the very Son of God, being tortured and crucified and eventually dying on the cross, being, being buried in the tomb, but now he has been resurrected. Think about that. Can you imagine their emotional state? And then Jesus shows up and, and to beat it all, He asks us, why are we troubled? <laughs> Think about that. You know, why are you upset that you've had a bad week? <laughs> Think about that. You know, why are you upset over this or that or the other? This is what the Lord, He showed up. He said, He said, He said, why are you troubled and why does doubt rise in your mind? He stood back. He said, look at my hands. Look at my feet. It is I. He said, He said, this is what I told you while I was with you. Everything must be fulfilled that was written in this word. He said, everything must be fulfilled that was written in the, the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms. You know what he was saying? He was saying, this should not have been a surprise to you. Right, 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 man. Church, he's, he was saying, I told you so. I warned you. And church, may I tell you, this world around us should not be a surprise to us. Amen. The things that are happening to America, the things that are happening in your household and around you, it should not take you by surprise. The things that are taking place, they should not be surprised. Jesus told us in His Word that these things will happen. He said, surely you're going to have problems. But He said, take cheer. Be of good courage. I've overcome those problems. I've overcome the world. He overcame so we can overcome. He was victorious so we can have victory in all we do. He was wounded. He was bruised. He was battered so that we can have healing in the name of Jesus. He did it for this man. He'll do it for us now. Somebody will it for us. I told you so. He said, here it is. I told you. Amen. And even in regards to blessings, amen, I believe to those who endure, he tells us that we shall be blessed. Now, to those who never give up, 
to those who never quit. Now think about this for a moment. Some of us, we allow little things in life to ruin our blessings. Don't we now? Come on, I'm going to get real with you. Some of us, we allow little things in life to ruin our day. We allow little things in life to just really knock us off the saddle. You know, well, that's not my color, Pastor. I don't like it. And you will, you will allow that to just ruin your, your entire life, your being. You know, that's not the way I would have done it. Well, you should have been here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We have to move forward. You gotta move forward. Yes. You have to move forward. And the first thing I believe after the resurrection we need to do is we need to move forward to our promise. Hallelujah. Amen. You just need to say, Lord, I need to move forward to my promise. See, he told the disciples, this is his word, not my word. He said, The promise is coming, but you gotta wait a little while. Hallelujah. Yes. He said, It's here. He said, I, I'm gonna send it to you. It's the promise of my father. And and they all they had to do was wait. That's it. He said, all you got to do is tarry for just a little while. All they had to do was wait for the promise, for he had already taken care of the bill. He paid the price. He went to Calvary. He took care of the debt. He took care of the problem. All they had to do was wait for the promise, for the promise was coming. Amen. He took care of it. Aren't you so glad that the Lord took care of it? I'm so glad that he took, I'm so glad that he paid a debt that I could not pay. There is no bank out there, and it doesn't matter how good your credit is, whether if you're 800 or 700, it doesn't matter. And when you cannot afford that debt that the Lord paid for you to pay for me. He took care of that debt. All they had to do was wait for him. I think about the story of the Good Samaritan. And the Good Samaritan, that is in Luke chapter 10. The Bible says a, a Good Samaritan or a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he fell among thieves. They stripped him. They wounded him. They left him for dead. And then the Bible says a certain priest came by. And when he saw him, he went to the other side and passed by as though he, not, he didn't even see him. And then the Bible says a certain Levite. You know this Levite? He was a, he was a church member. That's what it was. He was, a, he was a church member that came, and when he saw him, he just turned his head like, oh, no, no, I don't want to get involved. I don't want nothing to do with it. No, 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 not for me. I'm just going to just deal with my own situation to go on in life. But then the Bible says this good Samaritan, this good Samaritan came along, saw this certain man, saw him there bleeding and dying on the road to Jericho. He came in and he blessed him. He poured in the oil. He poured in the wine. He put him on his beast. He took him to an inn and he took care of him. He took him to a place of blessing. A place like Bethany where the Lord lifted his hands and blessed the people. Oh, but listen, that is just the story didn't stop there. Here's the promise. The promise will still get to come. The Bible says the next day, just before he departed, he gave the innkeeper some money. Now listen to me. This man that fell among thieves, he had no money because he got robbed. He didn't have anything on his back because they took him. Oh, but this good Samaritan, he came in. No doubt he clothed him. No doubt he supported him. He took him to that inn and he took some money and he paid that innkeeper. He paid that man. And this is what he said. Here's where the promise lies. He said this the very next day. He said, whatsoever thou spendest, Oh, listen to me. He said, I've got to go for just a little while now. I've got to go, but I'll be back. He said, I'll be back. And whatever thou spendest on this young man that I'm taking care of, he said, whatever it costs, whatever thou spendest, he said, I'll come back and I'll repay thee. Oh, listen, that's the promise, friend. Let me tell you what, amen, that Jesus is coming back. My good Samaritan, he's coming back someday. And when he comes back, oh, let me tell you what's going to happen. Here, here's where the promise lies, that he's coming back. And the old enemy that stripped you and that robbed you, that stole your joy, stole your money, stole your peace, tried to ruin your marriage, tried to take your babies, my
worry about colors on the walls or anything else. Jesus is coming back again. We've got to get the message out to the people that the Good Samaritan is coming back to the of our Heavenly Father, the Lord's blessings truly leads to that promise. And as we move forward after the resurrection, we move forward into understanding. Now, who has ever been confused? <laughs> now, I've been married 19 years. And Sister Melissa's not in here right now, but so I can talk about it. <laughs> I still get confused when I try to understand her. I just told her the other day, I said, baby, I love you, but I don't understand at all. You know, you're from Venus and I'm from Mars. I have no idea what you're talking about. So we had to move forward after the resurrection. We need to move forward into understanding. Jesus, the Bible says, opened their understanding. He opened their understanding to what? To Scripture. Yes. Amen. Church, listen to me. If you don't read it, you're not going to understand it. You've got to read it. Amen. Amen. And when you read it, you've got to pray to the Father that the Spirit will give you an understanding of the Word. He said that this is what was written, that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in His name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Hallelujah. So he was clearly giving them an understanding of what was going to happen and what needed to happen. And clearly he came to seek and save that which is lost. Amen. And the disciples, think about this. This is what the disciples saw him do during this ministry. They just needed some understanding of what was going on. They needed some understanding of what was happening. They needed someone to make sense of things. How many ever needed that? <laughs> Amen. That's why I have a good uh, eldership, good counsel around me. I, sometimes I go to them and I, guys, I just need y'all to make some sense of these things. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I'm one of those guys where sometimes I shoot first and ask questions uh -huh. later. Amen. And I shouldn't do that. I know that. I know that. And, and I've learned, uh, I've learned to sit back and to wait on things. But, but still, but I need understanding and I need someone to make sense. Someone that's been there, that's done that, that knows what's going on. It's kind of like the story. There was a grandmother in a small Missouri town. And so there was, they were having a trial one day. And during this trial, they needed someone to come in and make some sense of things. And so they subpoenaed this grandmother. And she'd been in the town all of her life. And she knew everything. I mean, she knew everything and everyone. She knew all about your business, one of those grandmothers. But she was very eloquent, very eloquent, very ritzy, well-to-do. She lived in the community. She was sworn in, and the prosecuting attorney, he asked her simply, he said, do you know me? And she said, well, sure I do, Mr. Williams. I've known you since you were born uh, at so-and-so hospital. Said, I knew your mother. I helped this and I helped that. And frankly, Mr. Williams, I will tell you, you are an embarrassment to this community. <laughs> she began to say that you lie, you cheat on your taxes, you cheated on your wife, you manipulate people, you talk bad about them behind their backs, and you think you're a big shot, and you're never going to amount to anything more than a paper-pushing shyster. Woo. This prosecuting attorney, he just, he didn't know what to say. I mean, think about it. He was, he was without words. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. So he was, uh, uh, and he looked at the defensive attorney and said, well, do you know him? And, the, and so the grandmother says, well, sure I do. Said, I know him. I know all about him. Said, he is Mr. Bradley. And I knew him when he was born. And he is no different from you. He is lazy. He has a bad drinking problem. He's cheated on his wife three different times. And his firm is one of the worst in the county. And as she said this, this defense attorney, he about fainted. 
I mean, the court was in chaos. Everybody was laughing, and the judge took his gavel. Order in the court. Order in the court. Order in the court. And as he finally got order, he told those two attorneys, he said, you approach the bench right now. And as they went to the bench, he simply said to them, he said, if either one of you morons ask her if she knows me, I'm going to put both of them in
crossroads. If we will obey the Lord and keep moving forward, we're going to be endued with power. Come on, power. Power. And the dynamic power. Power to overcome Satan's attack in our life. Power that no deadly thing formed against us shall prosper. Power to lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Power to go forward in the name of the Lord and live in victory. Claim the promise. Live the life of Christ. Power in Jesus name. Somebody give the Lord. My last point as I'm closing and the praise team comes back to this podium is that we need to move forward into a deeper relationship with God. I grew up with the old songs. The old songs. Of just a closer walk me. Oh. Granted Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. I am weak, but thou art strong. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, have you ever been weak before? Have you ever been weak before? Listen, even strong spiritual people get weak every now and then. But Jesus, he'll keep you from all harm.
It's like the Energizer Bunny. It's still going and going and going and going. Listen, I, I went all week long. And I thought, surely, surely I can do this. But I tell you what, I didn't have that kind of power like I thought I did. And, and I would collapse. And I would say, Lord, I need your spirit to come and to fill me, to give me power, to revive me, to get me up in the morning sky and go back and give it my best tomorrow. And this week, or the, the next several weeks, we'll be speaking of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Why not this? And I've got to close. Why not move from that place of Bethany, which is a good place, a place of blessing. But let's move from that into our place of promise. Amen. Our place of promise. Jesus said this. He said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but you got to wait. Now he's speaking to them, but you got to wait. Church, here's the great news. They had to wait. We don't. <laughs> we don't have to wait. When the promise is here. The promise is now. Oh, the Holy Spirit is moving. If you have something going on in your life where you need power, then I want you to come. If you have something in your life where you need victory, I want you to come. If you need healing, I want you to come. If you need to re renew that relationship with the Lord, I want you to come because the promise is here. The promise is now. Will you stand to your feet? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on.